here, and today we're doing another speed effect video. Yeah, another one. And this tutorial is basically just going to be another way to create a super speed effect, but I think this one is much better than the others. And it's definitely a lot more realistic. And this effect can work all the way from PowerDirector 14 just up to the latest version. And so now we're just going to hop right into PowerDirector. Okay, so once you're in PowerDirector, you want to have your clip. And when you're taking your shot, make sure you take a shot with at least one or two seconds of no one in the frame. But all you really need from that is around five frames. So I'm going to go to the beginning, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. And now we can trim it. Control T. Now trim it to where you want it to start me coming in here and now find the spot where you want your actor to zoom off. So I frame there, I'm gonna control T and split that and now we have this and we're gonna find the spot where you want your actor to stop. I'm gonna split it there. Now remove this middle part here. Move in the gap. And now we can take this clip here and put it in between. There we go, now you should have something that looks a bit like this. Now we're going to click on the first clip. We're going to go to the last frame. We're going to zoom in. We're going to extend it one more frame. Trim and move clips. Now we're going to take that frame and take a snapshot. Name it anything you want. Save. Now it's here in your library. And so we're going to just drag this down here so it matches up. We're going to remove that frame that we extended. Trim and move all clips. And also put that there. And we can trim this so that it fits and it's the same length as this clip in between here. So now you should have something that looks like this. Okay, nothing yet, but now we're gonna go and we're gonna click on this. We're gonna right click, edit video image, and edit in photo drag. And you can also do this in Photoshop. I've done this in my other tutorial, flying effect, but I'm just gonna show you guys again in case you don't know how. So we're gonna we're here and we're in the edit tab of Photo Director. I'm gonna do this in Photoshop too. We're gonna click on background removal and we can zoom in a bit. And I'm just gonna select myself, turn off intelligent, and just go and select every part of your actor. Once you've got all that done, and you've selected all of your actor, make sure this is select remove unselected area, and hit apply. Now it's okay if it's not perfect, because we're gonna, we're gonna add some motion blur when the actor's running, and you won't be able to tell. So now we're gonna click back, and yes. So now it's brought the photo back into PowerDirector. And you may notice, you might be a little big, so if you drag it back a frame, just to give reference to where you were, and sort of just align the two, there we go, and drag it back. So now we have this. Also not exciting. So now we're going to double click on this, clip, picture thing, and click position and scale. And then we can go to the last frame, also clicking position and scale. And so I finished over around here. So I'm going to move this, scale it down, and the same spot around there. So we're going to click on motion up here. We're going to select checkbox motion blur and just put it all the way up and now if you want on the last two frames you can uh, 
and click on properties. And on the position, you can ease in. And also on the scale. Because it might just make your transition look smoother. So now we're going to click OK. And you should have this. Which looks amazing. Except there's one problem. If I go through each frame, notice how all the trees and everything move around. And then they move back in place. What we can do to change this and also enhance the effect in general is click on effects tab here. And we're going to search radial. It's going to be radial blur. And we're going to put it on this clip. So it's going to look a bit weird at first. Now we're going to click effect uh, and keyframe. So once you're here, click on the keyframe button to add a keyframe. And for the first and for the first frame, we're going to have it pretty low, like that. Then we can go to the next frame, bring it up a little bit, go to the next frame, do the same again, and then start to bring it back down. And so not only will this cover up the moving of the surroundings, but it'll make the effect look cooler. Now we have this. See, there's a bit of lag there, but you've seen the preview. It's exactly the same. Now all you have to do is add your sound effect. I had to make mine shorter because it was too long, so I just multiplied the speed. And I brought down the sound a bit. So now your effect is complete. It's a bit more complicated than the other effects I've done, but it's definitely worth it, I think. And it'll sell for a way better effect than the others. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think I should do a tutorial on next. And click that big button that says subscribe. Bye.